China is the biggest producer of chopsticks in the world with a number of 63 billion pairs per year. According to the chairman of the state-owned timber firm Gillen Forest Industry, a total of 20 million 20-year-old trees have to be cut down each year to make way for the yearly production, which puts a heavy toll on national forests. A fun fact about China is that they initially used sticky rice as mortar for the Great Wall of China. Today I have some amazing facts about countries in the world that will blow your mind. As always, don't forget to subscribe. Alright, here we go. Sweden, of course known for IKEA, EBA and its history of Vikings, is also the country with the largest number of islands. An exact statistic is not available, but according to Statistics Sweden, it has approximately 270,000 islands, of which most of them are uninhabited. In fact, less than a thousand islands have a permanent population. Sweden's capital, Stockholm, itself is built on 14 islands and has more than 50 bridges. Pakistan is the largest producer of soccer balls in the world, accounting for 75% of the total world production, with the US being the biggest importer of 71%. According to a 1999 article on labor rights there, some balls are machine made, but the best ones are hand stitched and is a very labor intensive process that involves sewing together the panels of the ball and gluing the inflatable bladder. The Philippines is the world's largest supplier of nurses, covering roughly 25% of all overseas nurses in the world of which the United States is one of the largest receivers. In 2017, Philippines nurses accounted for 28% of the 512,000 migrants working as registered nurses there. According to a study done by the Health Services Research in 2007, the main reasons for the nurses to migrate are the poor working conditions and job scarcity in their own country. Another reason stated elsewhere is the higher salary in the US and Saudi Arabia, which pays about five times more than a top salary at home. Though China is the largest consumer of tea, Turkey is the largest tea drinker per person with a consumption of almost seven pounds per year, followed by Ireland and the UK as of 2016. Interesting fact here is that tea is the second most popular drink after water and is believed to be originated in China, where it was introduced as a medicinal drink in the 3rd century. 1300 years later, Portuguese merchants introduced the plant to the rest of the world. China still is however the biggest tea producer in the world, with an annual production of 2,473,443 tons. France is the most visited country in the world, with 86.9 million visitors in 2017. According to sources, reasons are Paris is a great place for couples and family to discover iconic arts and culture sites such as the Louvre, Eiffel Tower, Arc de Triomphe, the Grand Palais, and many others. Other contributing factors are direct easy access to France for eight countries with the UK having speedy access through a tunnel. France also has its world-renowned fine dining to the levels of Michelin star restaurants it one desires and 40 UNESCO World Heritage Sites throughout the country. I personally enjoyed the area around Cannes in the south of France with its nice views on the water along the boardwalk. A fun fact for you, what do you think is the most visited place in France? No, it's not the Eiffel Tower. It's in fact Disneyland Paris with an annual 15 million visitors per year. San Marino is the oldest surviving sovereign state in the world, founded in 301 AD, that still carries the same name and land continuously since that time, and also one of the smallest nations with a total area size of 61.2 square kilometers or 23.6 square miles. The 2018 population was around 33,344 and the currency is the euro. 
San Marino is an enclave and entirely surrounded by Italy. For that reason, it's also not surprising that its official language is Italian. The main driver for the economy in San Marino is tourism with an average of 3 million visitors per year. The Vatican is the smallest country in the world with a size of 0.49 square kilometers or 0.19 square miles, which makes it smaller than New York City's Central Park. Like San Marino, the Vatican is totally enclosed by Italy and was declared an independent state in 1929. The official head of state is the Pope and until 2019 has a population size of 825. A fun fact is that the local ATM has instructions in Latin as an option. I wonder how many people make use of that one. Other interesting fact is that the Vatican has the highest per capita wine consumption a year with 74 liters. This high number compared for example with the US of 9.9 .9 liters per capita can be explained due to the fact that there are not many children in the Vatican which can lower the per capita number. Another reason is the high number of international visitors and to some extent the use of wine for ceremonies as part of the church services. Computers in North Korea run an operating system that is called Red Star 3.0 which is designed to look like Apple's Mac OS and is based on Red Hat Linux. The browser resembles a modified Mozilla Firefox one called Nanera translated to my country in Korea. The software that is included is a text editor, an office suite, email client, audio and video players, and video games. A copy of the OS was obtained by Will Scott in 2013 when he was visiting the Pyongyang University of Science and Technology and purchased from a KCC retailer the OS. Papua New Guinea has the most languages spoken in the country with a stunning, get this, 831 as of today. The country has four official languages which are English, used in government and commerce and spoken by 2% of the population, Tok Pisin, which is a mix of Creole, some German and English and is spoken by 50% of the population. Then there is Hirimo 2, a simplified trading language which was important during the colonization period and before the rise of Tok Pisin. Last but not least, Papua New Guinea Sign Language was recognized officially in 2015. The remaining languages can be classified in either Austronesian or Papuan languages that predate the Austronesian ones. So why did Papua New Guinea become so language diverse? The theory is that because a large part of Papua New Guinea is rural and many villages were isolated because of its many rainforests, mountains, deep valleys, swamps, communication between the villages were limited and therefore languages in a specific community were not dominated by one specific language. The Netherlands has the tallest men with an average height of more than 183 centimeters or 6 feet according to a study done by eLife in 2016 which tracked growth trends of 18.6 million people that were born between 1896 and 1996 in 200 countries. According to the World Health Organization, quality of life and a good diet consisting of dairy products and cold water fish like mackerels and herrings may have contributed to their tall stature. It's also the only country in the world that has an advocacy representing tall people in the fact that doorways in the government buildings tend to be tall. New Zealand has the town with the longest name, which is 85 letters long and is called... Nah, I'm not even gonna try and pronounce this. But I'll leave a link to a video of a news reporter that actually did. The town is named after Tamatia, who was a famous chief and warrior and translates into the place where Tamatia, the man with the big knees, who slid, climbed and swallowed mountains, known as Land Eater, 
played his flute to his loved one. Locals simply call it Tamata Hill, and it's located in the North Island of New Zealand. Fun fact though, I cannot pronounce this town in New Zealand, but I can do the one that is the fourth largest place name with 44 characters and located in South Africa, 200 kilometers west of Pretoria, which is Twee Buffels met een koud moors dood geschiet van tijd. It means two buffaloes shot totally dead with one shot. In all countries but Bhutan, the gross national product or GNP is usually used to measure a country's wealth. However, in Bhutan, the gross national happiness or GNH is used to do just that. The GNH represents the collective happiness and well-being of the population and was officially enacted as the goal of the government in July 18, 2008. The GNH index consists of nine domains psychological well-being, health, education, time use, cultural diversity and resilience, good governance, community vitality, ecological diversity and resilience, and living standards. It then tries to measure by 33 indicators that are weighted each person's achievements in these categories by multiple surveys. According to a World Happiness Report that is annually published by the World Health Organization, Bhutan scored 95th out of 156 countries. Related to the previous topic, you may wonder which country scored number one in the annual publication of the World Happiness Report by the World Health Organization. Well, that honor goes to Finland. As of March 2020, Finland ranked the happiest country in the world for the third time. Contributing factors were reliable and extensive welfare benefits, such as pension, unemployment benefits, and public health care, but also low corruption a well-functioning democracy consisting of political stability and a high sense of autonomy and a high trust in fellow citizens and institutions like the president and police were part of the equation. And on that happy note, I conclude this video. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please give me a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe.